embark on a haunting journey as Thomas Evans, a gifted composer, trusts into a chilling mystery by a letter from his beloved Elizabeth Williams. Trapped in a sinister hotel, Elizabeth implores Thomas to craft a counter-melody for a haunting tune locked within her mother's locket. But danger lurks within the hotel's walls. Madness has consumed its staff, turning them into violent adversaries sensitive to any sound. Guided by Elizabeth's desperate calls, Thomas must navigate the hotel's treacherous corridors to locate four elusive musical cylinders. Each cylinder, when played on the ancient harmonium in the lobby, holds a key to rescuing Elizabeth from the attic where she's imprisoned. Yet, the hotel holds more horrors than Thomas anticipated. Amidst his quest for the cylinders, he encounters eerie figures with bags on their heads. Blind but deadly creatures who hunt by sound alone. In his search, Thomas uncovers unsettling truths. A mysterious man named Henry Hughes begs for aid before vanishing, while a visit to one of the rooms within the chapel unearths the first cylinder amidst a silent sanctuary. Descending into the basement and venturing into the graveyard, Thomas stumbles upon the grave of Prudence Williams, Elizabeth's mother, igniting more questions than answers. The journey spirals deeper as Thomas witnesses a disturbing ritual and confronts Elizabeth's father, Isaac, in a shocking act of violence. Armed only with a newfound device, the photonic modulator, Thomas gains a brief respite from danger, stunning his pursuers momentarily. As Thomas secures the second cylinder through cunning puzzles and perilous challenges, the hotel's mysteries intensify, promising revelations that may test Thomas's courage and resolve to the limit. A little bit of backstory before we move on. It all began with Jebediah Williams and his sons, Isaac and Abraham who exploited shipwrecks off their island by deceiving vessels with false beacons. Amidst their plunder, they discovered a bizarre creature, a half-bird, half-human entity whose haunting melodies mesmerized all who heard it. Recognizing its potential, Jebediah hatched a sinister plan to harness its allure, chaining it near the shore to lure more ships to their doom. Thus, the Quiet Ones were born, a Candlestein cult devoted to controlling this unearthly siren. Isaac, intrigued by the creature's influence, urged his wife Prudence to master its song, which proved eerily effective in their burgeoning hotel business. However, tragedy struck with Prudence's untimely death, trusting Isaac's ambitions onto their daughter. Elizabeth, a gifted singer like her mother, uncovered her father's dark designs and adamantly refused to comply. In desperation, the hotel descended into chaos with guests sacrificed for experiments and bodies looted. Isaac, thwarted by Elizabeth's defiance, divided the siren's song into four cylinders to wield its power more safely. His twisted experiments escalated, using the hotel staff as unwitting subjects. Meanwhile, Elizabeth, realizing she couldn't combat her father's plan alone, sought aid from four musicians, including Thomas, tasking them to compose a counter melody. As the fateful night of Isaac's grand experiment arrived, Elizabeth sings her part in the siren song. The results were catastrophic, sending everyone, even her own father and uncle, into a frenzied state. Escaping the mayhem, Elizabeth sought refuge in the attic, while the hotel became a grim monument to the siren's control. Now, every visitor to the hotel falls prey to the quiet ones, condemned to enact grisly rituals under the siren spell, sacrificing their identities in a macabre dance of obedience. And that's the backstory. Proceeding onward, we ascended to the first floor, piecing together the crests that unlocked the gate leading us higher. Elizabeth warned us of Abraham. A formidable figure on the second floor, our showdown with him involved a clever diversion to a disco room where blaring music allowed us to seize a crucial key and another cylinder. Venturing onward to the attic, we encountered what seemed to be Elizabeth until her head inexplicably detached. 
It became clear this was an imposter when Isaac ambushed us, plunging us down a laundry chute where yet another cylinder awaited. Isaac captured us, initiating the eerie ritual of the Quiet Ones, before the intervention of Elizabeth's loyal dog speared us from a fiery state. Escaping from the clutches of Isaac, we stealthily returned to the hotel's ground floor, ultimately subduing him in a tense game of musical Red Light Green Light, orchestrated by the music from the precious locket given to us by Elizabeth. Our journey culminates near the Grand Harmonium, where Elizabeth implored us to surrender the cylinders for a fateful decision, branching the path towards two distinct conclusions. In the first ending, Elizabeth accepts the cylinders, succumbing to the enchanting call of the siren. She leads you down into the depths of the elevator, intent on sacrificing the siren and initiating you in their mysterious cult. Alternatively, in the second ending, Thomas briefly refuses, countering the siren's influence with melodies discovered throughout the haunting hotel. Elizabeth breaks free from the siren's grasp, and together you descend into the elevator, freeing the siren who gratefully returns to her distant home, leaving behind an ear of mystery. The game concludes poignantly, with Elizabeth standing solemnly by her mother's grave, reflecting on the journey that has unfolded. And there you have it, the maid of Skur. Let me know in the comments what other games you would like for me to do. Drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And as always, take care and I'll see you on the next one.